Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video from the channel by the name of Leo's Chill. Today we are returning to Tower of God. Uh, this is Great Journey over here. And so we've done a video on Great Journey in the past and had a lot of fun with it. Most of what I was trying to talk about was they added a couple of like in-story hints toward the ancients and stuff like that from the original Manwa. And so it was pretty cool to see the extra additions. Uh, since then, we have had multiple new LRs added to the game. And then the weirdest thing happened where this game's been around for about a year now. And for some reason, the forum that they used to post all of the new updates on completely disappeared. They now only post the updates in the Discord that they have. It's been that way since about April this year. Don't quite know why. Um, it's a really, really weird thing. And so I did make a little guideline here for what we've gotten since the last uh, big update, I guess. So we last recorded a video, we've only done one so far, back in July slash August, I believe, to celebrate the first LR Gustang back when he first came to the game. And then since then, three months later, or about, yeah, three months later, four months, just a little bit, we got Jihad. And so as you can see in the background here, my favorite piece of art in the entire game, this is Jihad himself. And of course, in all of his elegance, he's using a black hole. And it is probably one of my favorite pieces of art from most of the gotchas I've ever played. This game seems to have at least some of the old people that used to work on Hero Kentare. And so they're just using the same sort of elements to 3D animate this stuff. And it is just beautiful. Uh, we also do have this art right here where he's trying to grab your head for some reason, but this one just is so perfect to me. And so I've had a lot of fun kind of celebrating that coming to the game. But since then, we also got an Ancient White about two months later after Jihad. And then we had a break of about four months where they had the first anniversary and stuff like that and didn't really get a lot of additions to the game. Uh, during that time, they were just running the white event still, and most of what they were adding to the game was just the ability to idle it for longer periods of time. There was a new style of game mode called, or a new style of event called Unstoppable Growth that made you get free Tower of Trial keys off of just playing Tower of Trial, and so it infinitely replenishes, it replenishes itself while you're playing it. And so it changed a lot of how you play the game as well. Fortunately, the first anniversary was just kind of what it was. Then we got a collaboration that had a bunch of collab characters from a series I don't actually know about, Max Level Newbie. And then in April, we got another ancient character in Erek Mazino. So we currently have four LRs inside the game. Ancients are basically the LR legendary rare from Dokkan, basically. And they completely change how you're operating inside the game. And so since then, since April, We've gotten far less updates. We've gotten, I believe it was six, maybe seven, new characters since then. But none of them have been ancients, and there's been no ancient event going on. And so, seeing the forum disappear and seeing the lack of ancients, it made me feel like this game was kind of in danger. But luckily this week, they did introduce this check-in right here, and it actually gives me a little bit of faith. So these are ancient tickets that you could only use on the LRs when they're around. And you can see right here, I have 13. Currently inside the game, there is no active way to spend it. And so there would be no reason to give out new ancient tickets unless they were planning on adding some kind of LR in nine days. So I wanted to come on here. I wanted to talk about the game and how it's currently doing kind of talk about the fact that the forum disappeared because obviously there's no one out there really talking about this game right now. And then I wanted to show off just what it's all about still. It basically feels like an idle game where you're just watching these characters do Final Fantasy attacks constantly and do crazy bursts while they grind you materials and you try and get through as much of the rice pot as you possibly can. Uh, I never really played this with audio, so it's actually super loud. It's kind of weird to me. 
but you basically are just trying to always upgrade your rice pot, which will increase your idle rewards every day. And so you're praying that these characters you have can get through the stage. Uh, typically you have like one sustain, one or two tanks, and then two main DPSs. Sometimes people run three DPSs if you can trust them a little bit more. But it really does depend on the team you're running. I use Freedom Dreamer, but in this game you pretty much have to choose one of the four factions to play as. So you would be choosing between Tower Climber, Oh, my phone's going off. Well, uh, you'd be choosing between Tower Climber, Freedom Dreamer, Great Family, and Fug. And so it's basically main characters, Tower Climbers. Freedom Dreamers are people that have their own things they want to do, but aren't part of a faction. Great Family is obviously all of like the Jihad princesses and stuff like that. So if you do know Tower of God, pretty much it follows the same sort of systems that you'd expect from inside there, including like the roles like Wave Controller and uh, Light Bearer, Fishman. And so I pretty much use Freedom Dreamer primarily, but I'm trying to work on my Great Family because... Here, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Great Family is what I chose for Jihad, and so I do want to see his animations, and so I have like a pseudo side team that also features this rad bomb that I personally... This is my favorite design of Bomb in the entire series. And you can see here he has stacked up a bunch of buffs, and you can do the view mode to see the full 3D art. I love this so much. And since Hiro Kantare died back in the day, I really do appreciate games that put extra effort into the art and stuff like that, because it's a nice little celebration of what the series is. And I think that it really lends itself well to the style. Um. But yeah, I just kind of grabbed one copy of every one of the Ancients because it's cool. I wasn't playing enough to get white for free, so I had to get lucky on him. But you get every LR slash Ancient at one copy and one weapon for free whenever they do the event, as long as you're playing every day. So I plan on trying to get the next one when it comes up, if they do release one. But aside from that, you don't get to do a heck of a lot on the game, except for just grind and grind and grind, improve your characters by that little bit, as you can, get as many materials to get them at higher tiers or higher upgrades and max them as far as you can, and just try to get your passives up so you can beat hard stages. And so they have implemented many systems as well in the game, where you also get every one of the bombs maxed out for free. And so it will take you, I believe this bomb in particular, the one that I use for Freedom Dreamer, takes a guaranteed 150 days at least to max out because his systems require you to do a bunch of very slow, slow upgrades on the hideout. And so every one of these bombs, if you are a fan of them, you'll be able to get them for free and run with them. And so it's very cool. Uh, but today we're just going to go ahead and show off some of the animations they have, show off some of the characters I've had a lot of fun with, and just kind of show everything that it has to offer because there pretty much is five game modes to participate in, and then you sit back and wait for another day. Um, right here, I could run my main team, but I think we're going to save my main team for the other one, and I want to show off the Great Family team right now. So we're going to toss Jihad in place of Gustang. We're going to swap the bomb that's here into the Red Thrissa bomb. But because this bomb is a support, we're going to put him not in the front. Um, I believe I usually put... Where's Calavan? Here he is. I put Calavan in the front because he's mostly a tank. And then my favorite character to watch do animations because she's rad is the Ghost of the 13 Months Yuri. She'll be popping up in the anime soon, and it's going to be very exciting when she does. Every bomb has their own passives as well, so I already have kind of my own build that I, that I have that I want to use for them. Uh, but let's just watch this play out. I'm going to turn off my camera so you can see the full animations and stuff. But you basically just set up your characters so that they can beat these stages and get as much damage as possible. And then just watch them blitz with every possible attack they've ever had. I usually play with no audio because 
It's nothing but voice lines all the time. But this... Look at that shit! It's so fucking cool! That's him crushing a black hole, and it's just so stylish. Alongside that, you can just see the bomb ends up buffing himself, everyone's doing their own animations. If you look clearly on the bottom left, you can kind of see the characters themselves doing the animations. But the effects that are coming out of them are the crazy Final Fantasy attacks I talked about. But yeah, it's all just min-maxing, it's all just slow idle systems, and unfortunately, you don't have any input towards changing how these characters are fighting, except for this tiny TR button down here where you can turn off or on their ignition weapons, pretty much. But it's not really that worth it unless you're min-maxing the hardest levels you're doing. This form of bomb's my favorite, though. He has, like, the thorn stuck in his chest and the black wings. It's just so stylish. I want to see a cosplay of that one day. Or I'd want to be the cosplay, really. Yeah, right now, there's the Tower of God Season 2 season. And it feels like it's kind of been Tokyo Ghoul tier. Where the adaptation had a lot of trouble toward the start of Season 2. And there was a lot of really rough animation moments. But a couple of the key moments that have happened throughout the series are still well animated and are still well done enough where you can put respect on the animators who did it. It just happens that there's been more misses than hits on Season 2. And it's improved since the second core of Season 2 has begun and the Workshop Battle arc has started. But it really was a rough first 12 episodes inside the season. And... I'm just glad this series is getting a full adaptation, because I've read all of it now, and I think that this story is some guy's magnum opus. So SIU, CU, the writer, which stands for Slave in Utero, which is the wildest name of all time. Crazy author name, I love it. Uh, he seems to be writing this as if it's literally his odyssey, his magnum opus. And you can feel that all throughout just how in-depth and how focused the world has been, really. Uh, but here, we're going to go ahead and show off my actual main team here. And so we're just going to let this rock. Uh, I do have the other ancient Marek Muzino on the team. And so you're going to see his animations alongside this. And let's hype about it. This is my main team, this is my Freedom Dreamer team, but they're also just going to do the exact same thing you just saw. It's just pure idol, watching them do their animations, and frankly, I've always thought that when it comes to an idol game, one of the most important parts is having intriguing visuals and being able to have fun watching your characters do what they do. And so I think that Dokkan and watching like the full Dokkan animations from DBZ, of course, and watching them just kind of play on the side while you're grinding and focusing on doing your work or uh, just kind of working on your own stuff is super fun. That's why this game kind of caught my attention for such a long time. I was able to watch the characters that I had a lot of fun reading about do these animations and they're sick. They're at, like that Erect Mizuno, sick as fuck. So I had a lot of enjoyment just letting this rock, but now it's been about a year of me playing off and on. I've probably played like close to 200 days of like the 450 it's been out right now. And I've seen the flow of gameplay and it really does slow down to a crawl to the point where you're just kind of doing the same thing every day. And you can't really swap characters or use ones that are unique because at the tier where you're grinding the hardest content, you need a team that can handle the hardest content. So you can't really split your resources and use randos for a lot of it. The only time you can use weaker teams is in Tower of Trial when you're grinding it for hours and hours and hours. And so if you want to leave that on the side to grind and show you the animations, you can. But that's basically your sense of dopamine. Aside from that, it's just 
do your dailies, and you could probably get it done within, like, uh, I think it would take me a good, like, 40 minutes to get every daily done if I'm caring about every part of the game modes and stuff. So it is a slower one, but it's basically made for a second monitor game. And it's it's fun to watch these. Until it gets to the point where you can't understand anything that's happening, which I think is happening with this team in particular. I could point out every different style of animation happening right now, but just realize that every color you're seeing matches a different character. So the bunnies are obviously the bunny girl, Erek is the one punching a bunch and creating the giant whatever. Gustang is shooting those lasers from the back and on top of the enemy. And Bomb, you can't even see him anymore. He's completely covered by every one of these effects. It's pretty funny in that way. Yeah, they stay cooking, and they keep on doing their damage. But because there is an Ancient coming up, I think this game is at its best when you have some sort of event you're grinding or some sort of stretch goal that you're shooting towards. So having, a, like, a, the Ancients have been released in Battle Passes. And the Battle Passes are basically just play the actual game every day. So it's fairly easy to make hopping on this during that ancient event and getting them for free pretty easy. Uh, I think it is probably one of the better games for that in terms of collection. So pretty much every single character that has come out, they've run events that are similar to the ones that are currently ongoing you can see here, and you get one free copy of every character they're celebrating around if you're playing the game reliably. And that changes a lot about it. It's basically a character collector where you get every character at uh, no dupes and just their weapon for free every time the event comes around. And that is so generous. That is such a positive thing. And then obviously, if you want to use that character more and more and more, you'd want to pull for them to get them to at least six stars, if not 12 stars, which 12 stars is just limit breaking for more content and stuff. But six stars is the point where they become usable, pretty much. And they give out quite a few summons. It's, it's been pretty nice. Uh, but it is a very slow game, and it is very idle. A lot of the time, you are just going into Tower of Trial. Uh, you can see here there, there is stages where you choose certain teams so you can just run. But Tower of Trial is basically set this to fast forward so it does extra keys and extra consumption, and then just... Slap this in, and it will kill 30 enemies at a time, over and over, until a boss spawns at a random percent, then you get the good items off of the boss when it dies. And so you just watch this exact screen for 6 plus hours straight while it grinds the game for you, pretty much. And it's cool, it's fancy. But it is exactly what it is, and so it really depends on if you love the series and if you want to see these characters doing animations while you slowly make progress in your day-to-day. -day. I think one of the best things about this game... Uh, there actually is a, a funny joke I want to show you guys, so let's... We're gonna pop into hard mode, I just gotta edit so that we get to, after this loading screen, the next one, so I can show you something. So, when it comes to the story itself, they did adapt pretty much every single part and chapter of the original Tower of God story, and they go through super slowly, just letting you experience the whole story in a 2D adaptation of everything. And so if you were trying to get ahead of the series, for example, the anime itself, you could literally go to 11.8, and from 11.8 onwards, you can just watch the rest of the adaptation. It'll only be voiced in Korean, but it's just here. And they're already through most of the Hell Train, which is one of the next arcs. One of my favorite things, actually. Uh, let me see if I can find this here. Uh, where's the white boy? Here it is. This, when I hit this chapter, I read this title and I started laughing to myself. 16-6, the released white boy. We released him, but will he? Will it be okay? It just sounds like they like set set like a random frat boy loose, 
and he's terrorizing a city like he's fucking like King Kong or something. It was just I was was not ready for such a weird title. Uh, but they kept on going. They've adapted all the way through uh, all of the Hell Joe arc. They've done the Floor of Death. They've done a little bit more of the Story of Bomb, Hell Joe's Castle, Hidden Floor, Data World. They started the Data World. They went a little bit more into the Data World. And currently we've been at the point of the Data World starting its finale arc, I believe, right here. And it's been this way for, I think, at least three months. I don't know if 3011 was available before those three months, because obviously I only caught up at that point. But currently, the series just kind of stops here. And I wonder if the forum being missing is a part of that. I wonder kind of what they're doing on the back end. But the reason I'm also skeptical is they've adapted the whole story and they've also done these very elaborate animations that have just these 3D styles. And it's completely different from the anime style, right? It's literally the way that the characters inside this game are animated, but the actual story itself. Because they're doing the 3D cutscenes between the endgame stuff, you definitely get a sense that they wanted to adapt as much as they possibly could of this uh, series. And so they had a lot of animations inside especially season one, and then it slowed down a little bit, and they kind of skipped through some of the parts of the workshop battle and kind of skipped forward a little bit there at the end too. And now it seems like they haven't done animations for most of the Kaiser battle. Uh, they skipped through most of the hell arc, and I told you the data world was done, right? Like they're about to hit the finale. They skipped from Hell Joe to the end of the Data arc, meaning they didn't do Mos Cheney versus Data Jihad or anything like that. So if they've released these cutscenes in the last six months since the last Ancient character back in April, I wonder if the team just got like a massively reduced budget and so they've just kind of slowed down the content so they can keep on coasting a little bit. And so we'll, we'll see. As the update comes out, if they are doing a new LR, if they are doing what I assume to be Trauma Ray, because right now inside the main story, Trauma Ray is popping off and is like the most important character. So if they were to release an Ancient, they would definitely want to go for him. And he did release in the Net Marble Tower of God game, but that one I don't have a lot of fun with. Honestly, it's it's overwhelming, it's poorly designed, and it just seems like it oozes moneymaker, and that is not what I'm trying to play. Regardless, what I wanted to do today, from here on out, I showed you guys what the gameplay is like, I showed you all of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and chill here, and from this point onwards in the video, we're just gonna be watching all of the cutscenes that happen inside the game. I'm gonna turn my camera off for now, uh, cause actually, does this cover it? No, it doesn't. Okay, we're just gonna chill and watch it then. So, we already watched the one with Rahel, we're just going to go from entering the tower all the way to the end of Season 3 and enjoy all of that content. Uh, if you are hopping on out for now, thanks for watching, but I guess we're just going to enjoy these cutscenes while they still exist. It's always a weird thing when you think about the fact that this 3D animation, what they made at this point, if this game does close because the devs end, end up losing their budget, this will be lost forever. So I, I want to check it all out. I haven't actually watched these in a row just yet, so I skipped most of them, I want to say. So it'll be cool to see how they adapt all of this as Season 2 is kind of popping off right now. I feel like very few of these show the 2D models like that bomb right there, though. Most of them are actually the webtoon reanimated. I mean, it is very close to that style, but just a little bit prettier. God, I love Yuri. Yuri's such a good character, and like, if you've been here since the Tokyo Ghoul days, I'm kind of into girls that scare me a little bit. Yuri's definitely in that class. She, she's in that category of slightly horrifying and scary, but got that spice to her.
And here they completely redo the initial Leviathan. Sick as hell. This gonna be the Black March. Yep. And he does it. Nice and easy. And so he graduates the next floor. The only way to pass the test. I really like the Season 1 style for Tower of God. I do wish they got a full adaptation of that style, but it seems like... From what I've seen people talking about. This is so funny. A little bit of music. They're like, no, I can't hunt them anymore because the time's up. Uh, but clearly they had to change it to more of a shonen style of adaptation with slower frames and stuff so they could stretch their budget better and make the full adaptation of season two exactly what they wanted while sacrificing some of the moments so that they could Enhance some of the ones that people loved more. So I do get it. I've heard a lot of people saying that Season 2 also wouldn't lend itself very well to the style of Season 1. I don't know. There's a lot of spooky stuff in there, and this does a really good job of it. Here it jumps right to a knock of Awakening Green April for the first time. Good stuff. Oh, no. All right, you ready to see an unknown power where he absolutely bodies her? I actually forget what this power was initially. But it's supposedly what injures her eye, right? Yeah. Also cuts her bodysuit open. Yeah. Get fucked in, Dorsey. Oh, wait. Get that ankle. You know, I never really realized until I played a gacha game that had these characters just how pronounced and Dorsey's horn is on her head. It seems like it's going to be something that's going to be super relevant inside the series. Fun fact, inside Tower of God to this point in the story, we still don't know in Dorsey's real name. The girl right there with the the horn, we haven't learned her real name nor her backstory or anything. She just kind of became popular because she's cute. But there's some real stuff in there that has yet to be alluded to. Oh, bye-bye. And Quant just gets bodied by that. God, it's so funny to see Kuhn with his little, like, flappy thing. Season 2 got rid of his extra triangle. Ren was always spooky. This weird mascot man. The fact that he's the first big antagonist is really funny to me. And Yuri shows up. And he gets flattened. And then, the worst moment in all of Tower of God. Oh. Bomb kindly offers his hand to Rachel, and she stands up even though she's not supposed to be able to walk, and pushes him the fuck off. Killing him. At least in his current form. This is the moment that season one ends on, and it is fucking heartbreaking. And then we just move on, and it's right to the time skip where Bug had already gotten bombed to become their god. By the way, that was two casualties right there. This man's got blood on his hands. We move on. Wagnon for the first time. But Wagnon kills him here. Like, Wagnon for, for, for real blows him up and... It would have killed him had he not had a weird skeleton man in his ass that happens to heal him for free. Obviously, it's more than a skeleton man, but 
We'll get there, for sure. And he slowly walks up to the test. This is the prince section. There you go. He's pretty fucking strong, gotta say. Season 2 did an alright job doing all this stuff. This is right where the animation started to get a little bit rough. She tries to cook him, and it does not matter at all. The rebellion of sweet and sour pork. It's so funny that Wagnon's power is like little Pokeballs that just explode. But it feels like it was just an intentional reference that was fun. Then they skip from the USB arc where he had to find a team straight to a Rec Mazino. And they definitely put a lot of good animation into this Slim Shady Man. He, he is just Eminem, isn't he? That's definitely the intention. Oh man. Fun fact, later Arek Mazino says in this moment, he only used like less than 1% of his pinky finger's power in this moment. Oh no, he, he throws a full punch here. And then he says on a different person, he only used one single pinky finger, 1%. And so seeing him use a full force punch on Bomb and not completely turn him into dust is crazy. It's just, I think that CU didn't know how highly scaled he had to be. Because Arek Mazino is meant to be like the strongest being in the tower aside from family heads. And even then might be stronger than them. But yeah, he's one of my favorites. They instantly skip all the way to the end of the reuniting. So I think there's like four episodes between the Arek Mazino fight and this happening in the actual adaptation. It's just they started to speed up a little bit. And we have the return. And Dorsey showing up again. Oh, he's actually tan. In the adaptation, they train or they turn Traveler, that guy right there. And they just like whitewashed him completely. They kept his actual like light skinness inside this. I respect that. Anok shows up and she's ready to go beat people's asses right before the workshop battle. This is during the little gun arc that happens. Someone who works on the team loves Anok for some reason. And this should have happened last week's episode. I actually haven't seen it just yet. And then this one should have been the like teaser for the end of last week's episode too. I gotta catch up, because I think that the... Oh yeah, because the one came out yesterday. I'm recording this on Sunday. I'll probably see this Monday. But yeah, he's back. Oh wait, no, this exact moment right there doesn't show up until a little bit later after one of the workshop battles. So I think that Rock returns in small form first, and then something happens and that happens. Oh, they did the Reflejo thing too. Reflejo. And then Dorsey shows up with her bong bong. Getting that uh, good stuff. Nice. I hate to admit that I've made like the endorsey bong bong joke too much. She gets like a teleporting power called bong bong, and it's all that her personality becomes later on, except for just being sassy. And so she basically just assists by being like a teleporter for everybody. And so I just say like endorsey hits that bong bong every time and saves everyone. There should be more of the workshop battle, right? Yep, because he's going Super Saiyan. The last attack. Yeah! And he dunks on Yuraha. She's kind of blushing a little bit, isn't she? Hmm. Alright, and from here on out, it's going to be pure excitement from later on inside the Manwa that people have seen only the anime will not see, or will not understand, but it is crazy. 
This is the reuniting between Bomb and Rachel. And of course, seeing her, his anger calms just enough for him to be pushed one more time and for her to leave him behind to go on the hell train. Oh, god damn. Here's Joaquin showing up to fight Bomb before the dollars battle. This is the first, like, big showing of White. Oh, man. I'm excited to see him adapted. I'm not sure who they got to voice him. I don't think they've announced it just yet, because he'll probably end up being in the season after Workshop Battle. But White is such a good antagonist. I love him all throughout Tower of God. Hmm? And here's the actual dollars battle. That's a cool panel. I feel like once that drops inside the actual anime, that's going to be a wallpaper engine wallpaper. Uh, but from here, they just do the whole thing. Kun manages to say to attack her with a fish, then stop it right in right in front of her just to tease her about it. Kun's literally like, "I will save your life." because we have bigger things, or bigger fish to fry, really. is literally how you gotta put it. And Kuhn supports Bomb meeting her again, unfortunately. But here's Awa doing one of her last things she ever does. Burning a couple of things on the hell train. And then she, like, disappears for forever. Alongside Wagnon. Oh, Daniel. Right, that was Wagnon picking up the knife, and then White gets revived for the first time in his full form now that he's actually gotten his parts together. So, oh, I cannot wait to see this all animated. She stabs him, but of course, that's a good thing. See your sister? She buffed me, not you. Ha. Huh. The power to stab evil. That's a weird name. This is the dollars battle, though. Hell yeah. This battle really cemented to me exactly what Bomb is as a character. This moment, he refuses to let anybody die. And so, refusing to let go of both the person that's about to die and falling. I think it's me saying. I don't quite remember. Um, He... Crushes White, especially fast, and then saves her as well because he has, like, the greed to protect everybody. He refuses to let anybody go. It's kind of similar to the greed that Ling inside Potomalco's Brotherhood embodies. He's just someone who's greedy enough that he refuses to lose anybody. And his power also embodies that. He kind of just absorbs everything. He needs enough power to rule the world, after all. Alrighty, Sachi, you're cooking. And Yuri shows up again. Howdy. And there you go. Now we're on to season three. And this is like one of the last scenes that Ron appears in. This cool ass destructo disc. I forget who he uses it on. It looked like Reflejo right there, but I don't think it actually is. Growing power. And he just styles on him. At this point, Bomb has so many buffs, and against Jobbers, he's still not using it. He's like, he's got a bunch of shit in his back pocket, and he's still chilling. Then we have another time skip, in which it starts the Kaiser arc. This arc was rad as well. 
They're not going to do too much of the animation. It's just going to be the start and then the end of the fight. And he stops it. Hell yeah. Ooh, that was a cool effect. That looked like it was like exploding outwards and then crippling back in. Or crinkling back in. That's cool. Now we have two more. Arek Mazino styling. This is the time where he uses the 1% of one pinky. And he still ends up parting the sea. Literally the Red Sea. He styles on Hell Joe so hard. He's like Hot Topic earrings too. Literally like the, the long studs. Never actually liked that style on people. I think uh, it's mostly people that want to buy gauges and stuff that stretch their ears using these. But I've never really wanted to stretch my ears myself. This is the final animation. I'm just aura auraing all over. And he parts the sea using all of his power. And of course, Lim Shady doesn't give a shit. But they didn't even do the animation for Bomb beating Hell Joe. They didn't do any animations for Mas Cheni versus Data Jihad. They didn't do anything about Kun Edwan. Um, and of course, all of Jihad versus Bomb is missing because they haven't adapted it yet. But they skip from. I'm just going to get rid of my camera. 19, 20, 25, which skips five full chapters. And now we've had five more chapters without any additions to it. And so what I feel like they're going to do is at the end of the stamp rally countdown that we currently have, they're going to release a new ancient character. And they're probably going to end up putting out chapter 31 or the second half of chapter 30 that has the actual animations for Bomb versus Jihad. This is me speculating, because of course there's no guarantees, they don't actually put out any notes about that or what they're planning, but I have a decent amount of confidence around it. So I'm excited to see what they do. Um, this game has become very samey, and so I'll probably just be watching the announcements inside the Discord and watching that as it updates. And if they do drop a ancient character in eight days or nine days, we'll hop back on and I'll show I'll show off that character when I do get him or them. I don't actually know what they're going to release. And from there, I'll probably only be playing whenever they release an ancient character. Because between those, I'm kind of sick of the same thing every day. And I'm currently, if I do go to the Sentinels here, you can see right here, every week I rank number seven on the leaderboard. And so I am reliably hitting the top of my server off of being pretty much entirely free to play just because I've put the time into the game. So games that are free to play friendly typically don't last a long time. So I pretty much only want to jump on this when there is intrigue with LRs. Otherwise, I feel like I'm kind of wasting my time on a game that's going to close soon with no forum as well. I definitely thought they were just going to straight up close close. I was planning on making a video at some point without the stamp rally going off and just talking about how it seems like it's going to be gone soon. But this renewed my confidence a little bit, and we will see if I'm completely wrong or not. Regardless, let's go back to main and we're just going to wrap on up for today. I hope you guys did enjoy. Tower of God has been very interesting. I really love the anime so far. It's been fun to watch. It's very like character centric. And so it kind of hits me in the same way Tokyo Ghoul does where I care about the characters a lot. And I know way too many names for my own good, unfortunately. On top of that, crazy fancy animations and stuff like that inside this game made me have a lot of fun with the series as I read through all of it. So right now is currently the best arc in the entire series. If you have not read Tower of God, I do suggest trying to read it at this exact point because things from this chapter onwards are going to be the craziest it's ever been and might be the top chapters to ever come out inside the series. That's just that's just my idea, though. It's absolute fucking cinema for now. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I will see you guys next time on Tower of God, hopefully. Bye-bye.